So I've got the bins in and I've started routing the cable. I have decided to run the cable inside the car, basically out through the firewall into the engine bay. And really the reason for doing that is just, it protects the wire. You know, it's probably a little cleaner install. It's not hanging below the bottom of the car where it could get damaged or, you know, the elements could mess with it over time. So for me, I'm just gonna route through the interior car. I've got the cable connected to my circuit breaker just loosely, and then I'm routing it down and then it pokes out the side of the uh, bin where I cut it. And then I'm gonna route it down in the corner on the left-hand side of the, by the door. There's a, an existing grommet that you can poke through, go basically into the fender well, and then straight into the engine bay. So let me show you that real quick. That disc in the center of the screen is a rubber grommet that basically goes into the firewall. On a right-hand drive car, on the other side of the firewall is the ECU, air, air conditioning system, heater core, all that stuff. So it's actually kind of messy to get to. Once we're there, we can go through that other hole in the side of the fender into the engine bay, which basically comes through down there. We can route it. I'm gonna make my connection back to where the original battery location was right here. What I did is pulled this cover off this is normally hanging off the side of the fuse box and connects into the positive post of the battery, but you just take two 10 mil bolts off right there, move this little uh, clip, it's, it's kind of just a flap that snaps in on the one side, and then you can basically just wiggle this out. So I'll need to take this back to my workshop and make some modifications to it, but essentially this is the location I'm trying to route that battery cable. So I guess the next step is I'll try to show you the best I can on the inside where that grommet is. It's difficult to see because it's covered up by a lot of the components in the, behind the dash. This is the left-hand side of the car, and if we go under the very corner of where the dash meets with the firewall, so I'll put a little annotation on the screen so that I can, it'll be more obvious than me trying to point at it, but there's a little cutout in the insulation that goes on the firewall. Behind that cutout is the grommet that I showed you on the other side. The goal will be to route the positive cable along the bottom of the floor pan and then up straight into that area. Really, in order to get access to this on a right-hand drive car, I did go ahead and take the ECU out and try to clear out as many of the wiring harnesses and cables and things as I could. Otherwise, it would be difficult to feed this thick gauge wire through. I'll go ahead and fish this through that grommet. I'll cut a little, kind of like an X in that grommet that's just a little bit smaller than the size of this cable. And then I'll start feeding it through. And then once it's there, I'll show you how it routes back into the engine bay. I finally got the cable routed and it's just a pain dealing with that thick cable. And it's really the, the sheathing is very tacky, so it, it just wants to stick to everything. So I still have to do some cable management and I'm gonna get some little cable ties and fasten that down so it doesn't move. Right here where the B pillar comes down, I'm gonna have to figure out exactly where I wanna route that so that I stay away from the seat belt, but that's in. I've got a little extra slack that I can play with. So here's where the cable comes up into the engine bay and you know it's not super tidy right now. I've gotta do some more you know, I'll use some zip ties and things to hold it. And you know, eventually I'll probably get to do an ABS delete. I do have the kit to do that. So eventually this will go away and I can tidy that line up a little bit. Snakes around, you know, comes down to right here. So I've left the extra there for now. I'll make the final cuts once I've got this piece made, but you know, I definitely want to make sure to stay away from any moving parts. I'll probably put some wire loom on this area just to help protect it uh, from heat and, off chance something does move and decides to hit that wire and then down here is where i came through the firewall i've already put some wire loom uh, over top of that and i'll secure that and of course if you have the if you have the fender liner it'll be protected anyway but for now i'll just use the wire loom make sure it's nice and secure and then eventually i'll have the fender liners installed and it'll be protected that way as well i would definitely recommend probably taking that entire grommet out to feed the cable through. And then once the cable's through, cut a slit in the grommet and slide it down over the wire. If you already have wires coming through it, that's that complicates things, but I didn't have anything. So I just pulled the whole grommet out. The part you see here is a rubber cover and then inside is a little plastic ring that you can take apart. And then the whole thing just pops out and then you can feed it over the wire and it just snaps right back in. So that's probably the easiest way to fish that through the firewall. The very last thing I need to do other than secure the cable down is to modify the connector that goes here on the fuse block. Let's go over to my workshop and I'll show you what I need to do with that. Here's the bracket that connects onto that 
fuse block that connects into the positive post of the battery. We don't necessarily need this anymore, so um, you probably could just leave this off and then, you know, depending on what your lug look like, you potentially have enough clearance to get it beyond, you know, the other wire that comes in here. The other option that people go with is, uh, you know, trim this off because we don't need this section anymore, but we can drill a hole and mount our lug over here, which basically gets us away from having to worry about the clearance. So um, this is what I'm going to do. And you have a little bit of a dimension here that you can get, um, you know, you, it has to be relatively shallow. I mean, even that, even that nut is going to potentially cause a little bit of a conflict, but I have an M6 uh, pan head that will just fit in my lug. Now, ideally this probably should have been a quarter inch um, hole instead of a three eighths inch hole, but um, that's going to have enough meat to connect. But basically I need to get this cut off here and then drill a hole so that the lug can go here and then I'll get all this cleaned up before we put it back in the car. This is like a, a tinned brass piece. So it's relatively easy to cut and drill. Um, and I did go ahead and um, scuff it up and try to get it nice and shiny again. But once this is in the car, basically be able to run, you know, configuration like that. And it won't have any interference with the cable that runs right here. So um, I think what I need to do now is kind of permanently install the cable in the car just so I can get the exact length that I need to cut it. I'm gonna head back out to the car and I'm gonna mount that uh, um, cable down and have various, um, these are basically uh, wire clamps, but uh, I'm gonna use 5 8 inch size and we'll get some self-tapping screws and drive those in. But I'll just put a few of these along just to kind of give it a nice secure connection. I'm also going to take some more of my Tessa tape out with me and wrap that cable in a couple of places where it looks like the cables could rub and it wouldn't hurt to put, probably put a few twists of that on there just to help with any rattling or noise. So um, let's get back out to the garage and I'll show you that. I've been out in the garage for a couple hours now and neighbors have been shooting off fireworks so I didn't do a lot of filming. But I do think I'm, I'm pretty much done with the, the, the routing of the cable. We'll start up here at the fuse block and then we'll work our way back and I'll show you, you know, kind of the finished condition. So this is that fuse block and right there is the, the positive cable coming into the engine bay and that's where it's connecting. So we can go ahead and close that and pop that cover back on. So this is still it's it's secure because I've, I've put some zip ties and I've, I've kind of done a little bit of cable management to kind of secure everything back um, I actually did find where this had been rubbed through on the belt so um, hopefully none of this could come in contact with that belt but um, so here's the cable I ran it through some uh, wire conduit and it basically snakes back up through there and down into that corner. When we go through and do work in the engine bay, we'll do a more permanent solution. But for now, this is gonna be more than fine. The only thing I have left to do up here is, I basically wanna reattach the ground that went to the battery. Um, there's, some, there's some threaded where the battery box was that I can basically cut this off and connect it down there. So uh, I'll do that tomorrow probably. I just need to clean the paint off and get the right size bolt and then I can connect that back to the chassis. But for now, I'm just gonna tuck that right there. So there's the cable and I did go ahead and put some Tessa tape, just a loose wrap to stop it from making so much noise if there's any, any vibrations. And then I've got a cable clamp up there, cable clamp right here. It goes through this brace and continues on. There's a cable clamp there. It runs up into the bin now. This cable clamp is not installed, but once I've gotten the pillar, the B pillar panel on, I can kind of make a final adjustment to where that one needs to go. Um, again, I'm just using some self tapping screws, so it's not a big deal. Then we run into the bin and of course I don't have it connected right now because nothing's connected in the car, but I would just be able to connect it right there onto the circuit breaker. Um, I got my ground installed. I'm not very happy with that little short cable. It's making a pretty tight bend. So what I may do is take the circuit breaker and move it down to the right a little bit. And that should help free up some room for that cable to make its turn. But for now it'll be okay. But the next time I get the bins out, I'll probably just go ahead and move this down a little bit and that'll help free up some space. 
So I thought I would give you at least one last look from this side so you can kind of see how all that goes together. When I get the carpet put back in the car, it may take some finessing to not have such a, a bump there, um, but I don't think it'll be a huge problem because a lot of it'll be under the seat or behind the seat. And then, you know, the front part of the carpet has that thick uh, foam. So I, I don't think it'll be a huge issue with the carpet. And as almost always, this project took way longer than I thought it would, but it was really just a lot of back and forth trying to get the bin cut properly. And again, that's a, a full size 24 F series AGM battery that I've got fit in there. And of course I don't have anything plugged into the car right now, so I'm not gonna complete the circuits and get everything plugged in, but we still obviously have to test to make sure we're getting correct voltage and not having any issues with any ground. So there could still be some work, but I'm pretty confident that I was careful about what I did, made all the connections pretty solid. So hopefully there's no issues with that. The bins are gonna need a lot of attention because all the tabs are broken. There's actually a little crack in there that's kind of hard to see. I don't have all the mountings created uh, along the back. I've got you know the tabs here for the pillar. So these bins will be coming back out and I'll be making some repairs to these tabs. But for now, it just kind of held in there by friction at this point. But um, these will probably come back out um, after we potentially go to the car shows. For now, that's all I'm gonna be able to get to for today. So the heat index has been like near 100 for like the last week. So it's been very hot and humid in my garage. And so progress has been a little bit slow because I've had to wait till the evening time for things to cool down a little bit. You know, I had to wait on a couple parts and get the correct size lugs and, and deal with all that. But I think it's completed now. And hopefully when we get the dash put in and the ECU put back in that all we gotta do is plug that last cable to get in and everything works fine. So hopefully you guys got some good ideas from this project. Maybe you have some better tips and tricks that I didn't think of. You know, there's pros and cons to routing this cable under the car or inside the car. Uh, really under the car is just a is somewhat of a risk because if you bottom out on something, you could damage the cable um, and it's just exposed depending on, like I used welding cable so that the sheathing on that may not be, um, it may not have the life of a cable that was intended to be exposed to the elements. So I decided to route mine through the inside. Now the downside there is that you could introduce some noise if you're running along or next to other like signal cables or anything. But as long as you can stay away from them a few inches and you know potentially cross them at about 90 degrees, that should help with not creating any extra noise. But Again, until we get everything plugged in, I won't know for sure if there, we have any issues. Fingers crossed that we won't. So the car shows are only like three days away at this point. You know, I really have to condense my list of things I need to do, but basically I need to get the sound deadening in, the insulation in, the pre-wiring for the audio system, get the carpet in, then I can get the dash in. Once the dash is in, you know, I can do the steering column steering wheel shifter put in, put the center console in, put the driver's seat in. So there's still a lot to do, but I've got a couple days that I can work on this, but um, you know, the weather's kind of looking bad too. So who knows, it's gonna be a rush trying to get there. But anyway, guys, I am super sweaty and I need to go inside and get cleaned up. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing. I'm gonna catch you guys later.